Turning to some breaking news here on the home front, we learned today the January 6th committee is moving forward to seek contempt charges for former Trump aides Dan Scavino and another name that looms even larger, Peter Navarro. The allegation from the committee is that they have completely defied subpoenas illegally, and that is basically what Navarro came close to admitting was his plan, because like any human being in America, he's subject to subpoenas, and he basically was dismissive about all of it when I asked him about it on the beat. That interview made headlines for some of his odd and fairly unconvincing privilege claims. Why risk a legal battle or going to jail to refuse to discuss them with the committee under oath? The president has invoked executive privilege. It's not my privilege to waive. Do you no, understand no, no, no. that you've already Stop waved it by right discussing there, it? They want under That's oath. And number two, happened. finally, Peter, are you prepared to risk indictment for defying the subpoena? Uh, I'll stand tall on this. He said he'd stand tall on this, and if by that he means facing the consequences while defying the committee, then fact check true. That's what he appears to continue to be doing. This contempt proceedings go forward like the others you may recall for Steve Bannon. The committee votes, then Congress has a vote on holding someone in contempt. That kicks it over for potential criminal prosecution by the DOJ. Navarro has also been ducking questions about everything from what he called the Green Bay Sweep plan to overturn the election to something that Congress wanted to get his answers on under oath. And again, if his answers make the case that he wasn't involved, that's fine. But we did ask, and many want to know, how involved and aware he was of Donald Trump's now documented push to try to seize voting machines and get the military involved. You cannot assert on, on the, the, the Pence side that President Trump was wrong. Vice President Harris will ultimately have the call over who should be president, regardless of the results. You've misconstrued the whole Green Bay Sweep plan. But it seems like it's making you stretch when we just change the name from Pence to Harris. Are you no, 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 holding no. the contention? No. If, if if any any vice president, if what? you have two hours of Is debate that a yes in or each no, Peter? chamber, and at the end of that, you have the Peter, ability to Peter, you're an outspoken individual. Was that a yes? Because I didn't hear a yes. I didn't hear a yes. Uh, viewers and listeners can decide for themselves what they heard. That was Navarro struggling, really, to explain a consistent view of why the vice president in Republican administrations would have some sort of power to overrule elections, but not here. He was laboring to claim that it wasn't the overruling that they wanted, but just to send the votes back to the states for some re-re-recount. Now, we should mention, it makes news when witnesses defy, but the vast majority of people contacted by Congress in the January 6th probe have cooperated, providing testimony and documents. This is actually the fourth time the panel has said someone is so uncooperative that they're moving towards the very severe contempt proceeding. They did that for Trump allies Steve Bannon, Mark Meadows, and Jeffrey Clark. Now, those individuals had different legal claims. Clark ended up pleading the fifth, which we should note is a form of cooperating, meaning he spoke to the committee rather than defying it. Bannon defied completely, was indicted. Others, like Meadows, have not been indicted. The Justice Department pursuing Bannon for contempt of Congress. He awaits trial. Meadows specifically was referred for that possible prosecution, and it was in December. So we should note that it's been several months. Anything could happen. But in fairness to Mr. Meadows, at this point in time, I can report to you the DOJ has clearly not publicly found enough evidence to move forward on any indictment. Meanwhile, in related news, this is brand new. I was just discussing this with our colleagues coming on the air. The wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, Ginny Thomas, has now been caught effectively in writing, pressing Mark Meadows to try to overturn the election as well. She did this via text. It's unclear whether it was connected to other people who, of course, would later be in cases that her husband would rule on. But among other things, these texts show she falsely said the election was, quote, the greatest heist in our history. The Washington Post reporting on some damning texts that lead to even more questions about fairness, independence, and recusal for Justice Thomas at the Supreme Court.